Hey, welcome back everybody. On the bench today, we have an ICOM IC2720. It's a dual band, amateur radio, VHF, UHF. And this one does not power on. It partially powers on. It's very sparingly. I believe it was powering on. And then it the screen went garbled and the <clears throat> pardon me, and then it got to this point. So we're gonna follow our steps and see where things go bad. Well, somebody's been in here before. Of course, <laughs> that's how it always is because there's electrolytic through-hole capacitors and they're Chang X brand. We got them back here. Uh, this this should be a through-hole. It's normal. That's factory goop on it. It's a big filter cap. Uh, we got a couple here. The one there, and it looks like we've got a surface mount electrolytic missing right here. Uh, these are what should be in here. Um, yeah, we've got <laughs> the sh shield's been removed. Look at this lovely goopy solder mess here. Uh, so yeah, someone's definitely been in here before. Yeah, antenna jacks all gooped up, goobered. So this board's been out at some point. Uh, they did put some arctic so it's like i'm getting this these radios from the same same seller on ebay it's gotta be oh we got a we got a bodge wire over here there bodge and some yes They did a nice job with the bodge, and they, oh, you can see there's some trace of that, okay, okay. There should be a shield over this. That's what that tab is. That, that, there. I'll bet you when they pulled the shield, they broke some of these traces. thing I'm gonna do here is pull it all apart. Well, the best thing to do is to just pull her apart.
Well, here we are back with this project. As you can see, it's uh, on a different desktop now because it sat in a box for a very long time and got pushed aside for other projects. So today we're going to get back to it and we're just going to do a little bit of testing to figure out what our problem is. Well, that's odd. So we're not getting any display. So Controls are working. All right, so my next step is going to be, let's check the schematic and see what we have going from the main unit to the head unit and see if we have voltage. And we can see with the oscilloscope here if we have communications through the serial bus. We've got this high voltage line, CTHV, which goes through a one ohm resistor to the HV line. And if you follow that up, whoop, the HV line is directly on the main bus. It has a fuse here should be 13.77 volts. Okay, so if, if we measure that one ohm resistor that was right before the uh, pin, 13.79 volts, and then on the other side of the resistor, it's dropping down to 12 volts, which is acceptable, 12.3. Now watch what happens when I turn the power on. Drops down to 8 volts. Turn the power off. Kicks back up. So what happens if we... Get powered up, that's why. Getting almost 300 ohms on a one ohm resistor. So clearly that's an issue. That resistor is there as a fuse in a way. And I think it's done its job. So what we're gonna do now is pop that bad boy out and get something else in there. All right, found a resistor, so let's get this one out of here. Easy peasy. Just grab a little, a little tiny bit more solder on there. Beautiful.
Well, it is ready to test. Bring in the faceplate here. And we'll hook it up to our test set. Give it some power. We have power. Hello? Well guys, we're going to call this one fixed for now. We'll do some further testing on it, but it uh, appears that that was the issue. Just that resistor in line with the head unit power supply, and it was limiting the amount of power that we could get into it. So, uh, We'll call this one done, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.